Uh, hello there, this is Steve here in Sydney, and I've got uh, a kind of pleasant surpri surprise for you. It's a sort of uh, a little treasure find I discovered on Australian television. And this, uh, this little video is of great interest to not just skeptics, but skeptic watchers. It explains their behavior, and the wonderful news is it's really got total objective separation from the politics of big pharma, um, magicians, um, pseudo-skepticism and who they're really working for and that sort of stuff and their strange connection to pornographic books and all that sort of stuff. Um, it's been it's a wonderful mystery to try and solve and we seem to have it solved accidentally by an independent discovery in the suburb of Logan, South Brisbane. It turns up on um, an Australian television show. It's just a five minute segment and it says so much about pseudo-skeptics and you're going to see what the amazing discovery is that a school teacher made which is a great benefit to us studying the pseudo-skeptic phenomenon on the internet. So here's the video for you. A Queensland school is using a bit of sorcery to help its students cope with life in and outside the classroom. The state school at Logan, south of Brisbane, has employed a magician. He's not teaching trickery, but lessons in life, as Kieran McKechnie discovered. Hey guys, how are you? Come on in, come on in. On a weekday morning at a small school on Brisbane's outskirts, a quiet transformation is taking place. Now you know the drill, you have to stand there and put a big smile on your face. Right? Now, With a little bit of magic, these children are getting a head start in life and school. A lot of these kids come from underprivileged backgrounds, one parent or immigrant families, sometimes they're from troubled homes. One of the easiest ways to get the positive good feelings is to smile. Yeah. Now, but this performance is teaching these kids vital life lessons. I like to embed messages of confidence building, of building self-esteem, of resilience. Uh, so many, so many good messages you can, you can give them. And the great thing is that kids think that they're getting ice cream, but I'm really giving them Brussels sprouts. Julian Mather is the first magician in residence at an Australian school. When I talk to my kids at home, they don't listen to me. When teachers talk to the kids, quite often they're not listening all the time. But when a third party comes in and that 30, third party is using uh, engaging magic like I do, that uh, it gets kids' attention, uh, once I've got their attention, then I can slip those other little messages that parents and teachers find hard to um, you know, impart to the kids. And I've noticed almost immediately Julian started working with the children was this increase in confidence. And that's what the kids tell me, that they feel so much more confident. The, trick the idea sense. for a magician in residence was sparked last year when Julian Mather came to Burroughs State School for a one-off magic show. Teacher Raylene Pettigrew, whose grade three class was made up of a high number of children with troubled home lives and anger management issues, saw an instantaneous effect on her students. They would listen to a story about a, an angry child. The book, the mo most amazing book was called Angry Arthur. And the children related to this so strongly I hadn't, I'd hardly been listening to the story and then at the end I just looked at the class and the boys and the girls were just looking with their mouths open saying, and one of the boys said, I feel like that. And then Julian came in and worked with the magic, just giving them power to communicate, to try again. It was just an utterly transformational. Raylene Pettigrew believes the program works so well because until now many of these children didn't have a strong male role model. And guys, I need my five cent piece and my pen back at the end. Many children um, have maybe just females in their lives. All the boys want him to be, they want to be Julian or they want to be like Julian and um, the girls always say they want him to be their father. If you kneel down, he'll look down at you. When you come back up, 
he'll look back up at you. Over the course of his eight-week program, Julian Mather has seen a positive change in the students. Yeah, I have seen a change in the kids from day one. I remember on day one particularly, uh, there was a young boy who was sitting right there and uh, I asked the kids, what did you do on the weekend? And this boy with a sense of bravado said, well, on the weekend, uh, I got into two fights in football and I got banned from the Junior Football League. Anyway, during the course, uh, the process of this uh, last seven weeks, I've seen this boy develop. He's been the one person who's really taken this, particularly taken the card tricks. He's come down and he said, he's told me, he said, like, when I use the cards, I feel calmed. It gives me a chance to focus uh, my anger and my energy. Sometimes when, if you're angry, you can just come down and relax and get taught magic tricks. Sometimes he teaches you if you want respect, give respect, and then if you do that, you might learn some more tricks and you might become a magician when you're older. His tricks figure, trigger feelings that are the happy feelings. And the smiling really kept me calm around other people when they were doing bad stuff. But it's also improved their academic performance. In just one semester, the program has boosted school attendance and vastly improved literacy rates. Often we will do a journal reflection on the lesson and what is the life lesson and what the trick that we have learnt today. I feel this program can give kids a little bit of a head start because what I tell the kids is that if you're enthusiastic about anything in life, uh, that can take you a long way. So now that you've seen that video, you might want to watch it a couple of times and just sort of drink in some of the details provided by little people and uh, uh, school teachers who not only made a chance observation, but actually did experiments and got results. Um, we do notice there are many similarities between what the little children describe and their behaviour. They're basically duffers in that school. They're backward children academically. They're emotionally undeveloped. They need to be told that smiling's good for you. They don't know what to do with emotions, some emotions they haven't experienced yet. Um, the joy of discovery they haven't experienced yet. It's doing the magician's tricks. The discovery of how a trick is done, how to learn it yourself, is something they haven't yet experienced. Thus they are further attracted to more magician's tricks. But now we've got a clue. We've got the formula as to why so many people are attracted to James Randi and magicians generally. They need to have basically a defective home background and academic background at school. Uh, missing father figure seems to be part of the formula pointed out by the teachers. And the magician provides the surrogate father figure in that particular case in Logan, south of Brisbane. Um, I'll tell you now that uh, if you go to James Randi's YouTube channel, you will find many hundreds of people queuing up to pass comments on his channel to the effect that he is their father. They call him Jesus, son of God. They call him God. And he's the, the champion atheist, amazingly, but they call him father and God and son of God and all sorts of wonderful things. So very clearly, the those adults um, still need that father figure in their life. And James Randi is the closest they can get to it. It would also explain their uh, their apologetic defense of everything that you, he can do no wrong, no matter how roguish he is. He can do no wrong in the eyes of his skeptical followers because he's their basically adopted father. Um, now, I must say I'm mo only moderately interested in magicians. They never entranced me. Um, and I think that goes for mainstream people. But for people who are emotionally deprived of stimulation, where the stimulation's required for physical brain development, the stimulation's got to be there at a certain time. Um, the magician in this case in Logan, South of Brisbane, is providing the necessary substitute and changing the personalities and academic performances and social behaviours of these people who have very much pseudo-skeptic problems 
uh, that we're getting described to us by the teachers. Okay, they are basically repaired by learning magic tricks. They're drawn away from misery and he's showing them how to operate their, their physical emotions. Uh, they need formal lessons in it. That's how they're, um, how deprived they are of emotional stimulation at home. So that tells us something a lot about grown-up pseudo-skeptics on the internet online. Now, they didn't get that when they were small, so they remain frozen in that negative uh, mindset, and they end up on the internet raging against the world, fighting with everyone they meet, like the little boy getting into fights at football all the time. Um, associating with James Randi for adults doesn't seem to improve their performance because they still, as a group, um, largely manifest all the negatives that we see in, that, in the little children. Uh, years and years of association and worship of James Randi doesn't seem enough. So uh, maybe it's too late for them. I hope it isn't. I hope there's some way. Um, to get some benefit out of their association with James Randi. And can I suggest this? They are famous. Susan Blackmore says, not one pseudo-skeptic will ever do anything, try anything. They're too scared, too timid to try meditation or sitting on your hands or a yoga trick or anything. Uh, they won't do anything. Whereas the little children did try magic tricks. I'm just wondering if learning magic tricks for the pseudo-skeptics on the internet might be a cure, might be a help, might improve their personal happiness and uh, stop them beating up on everyone they meet, like the little boy playing football. That's just a suggestion. I'm hoping there's a positive outcome from this little discovery that if adults could learn a magic tricks from James Randi and practice them, they might be able to still get that repair function of their emotional, physical equipment that the little children did in the Logan video. So I hope I've given you, uh, skeptic watchers, um, some good material to try out, bounce off a few people, check it out, eh? So I'll let you go now. Steve in Sydney, over and out. And a lady psychologist counselor, school teacher, responds to the video clip here. The idea I most identify with in the clip is the need for male role models. I see so many teenage boys at school lost, completely lost, because they have no positive male role models. They form gangs and model off one another, which is disastrous. Just like skeptics on YouTube. Wherever I can, I connect them to programs where they can be mentored by men, decent, kind, caring, responsible men who model how to be a man, either deliberately or unconsciously. I see amazing results. It is of course important for girls too, but they also model on the females around them. Feminists and gay marriage advocates please take note. 